Connor, just can you give me your sense of kind of where, where the group is at? Once again, my teammates come up short. I still love the look on his face right there because you know he has his face. Yeah. His face really says it all. Well, guys, welcome to the Honest Press Conference segment where we say what the players really want to say. And uh, there's no better way to start this off than with the secret man, the godfather himself, Mr. Lou Lamorello, and he'll be played by one Anthony LaRocco. So, John, Mark, thanks for having me on again. Uh, the second time I came on, you know, a little bit here. Um, you know, you know, the hockey world is, is wondering what I'm up to. Um, yeah, as you know, my Islanders haven't made a single transaction since free agency started. We have not signed a player. Um, I know the media is talking about how I have handshake agreements with, with uh, free agent forward Zach Parise, um, Kyle Palmieri, Casey Zekas, uh, Travis Zajac, um, and that uh, I'm not filing the contracts uh, because I don't want teams to know where I stand with my salary cap as I navigate the waters of re-signing Adam Pellick to a long-term deal, Anthony Bovillier, Ilya Sorokin, and, you know, working on a trade for a player to come in from the outside, whether it be that player from the St. Louis Blues or a left-shot defenseman to replace Nick Letty, who I traded to Detroit and got a second-round pick. So, um, you know, I'm doing the best uh, – the best job I can for my team. Uh, this is the way I operate. Some people don't like it. Some people saying that, you know, I should file my contract and that this isn't, this isn't a good precedent that should be said. Uh, but you know, I'm big Lou. Um, you know, I get things done and I operate the way I want to operate and people usually, uh, don't cross me and leave me alone. So, um, you know, I'll take your questions and, uh, hopefully, um, you know, I can answer some of them. Lou, um, why all the secrecy? I have to ask about this. I, there's more of a chance I can get leaks from uh, the CIA than I can get uh, from you on whether or not you're signing a player in the NHL. Um, you know, Mark, Mark um, you remember uh, you remember this this fella named Jimmy Hoffa? Oh yeah. Oh yes. So you know, no one's ever found him. Yeah, so, you know, listen, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, <laughs> you know, people, uh, this is this, this is this is the way I operate. I don't like anybody to know my business. I keep it all in the family. And, um, you know, again, you know, I, I kind of do what I want, really. Um, I find ways to circumvent the, the CBA, and Gary Bettman doesn't say anything to me because, again, you know, he's, he's – I left the horse head in his bed a couple of times, so – um, he knows he knows what's good for him and as uh, other general managers I, I really don't care if they don't like the way I'm operating um, you know player agents uh, they know if they ever want to deal in the National Hockey League with my team ever again uh, they kind of pipe down so um, you know uh, listen this is the way it is and uh, you know it's the way it's gonna stay that's all I can say okay so I uh... With Lad, just one word. How? How was it? Was it the the cement boots threat? Was it the horse head? What was it? The the removal of certain limbs and appendages? How? Well, um, you know, Andrew Lad uh, wanted to continue playing hockey. I told him it wasn't going to be for my hockey team. Um, if you recall, he uh, he agreed to waive his no trade clause. Uh, you know, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, when I had that place, that trade in place to send to Minnesota for Zach Parise. So to get him to waive was pretty easy. But I called up uh, Coyotes uh, general manager, Bill Armstrong, um, and I told him, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. I'm not going to give up a first-round pick for Andrew Ladd. Um, and if you don't take him and you don't meet my demands, um, you know, you're let's just say you're going to wake up with a horse head in your bed the next day. <laughs> or, um, you know, a representative from from the New York Islanders, he was going to get a knock at his door, and they were going to not be so friendly to him. So um, that's how I got it done. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that Andrew Ladd agreed to waive, and I didn't have to threaten him at all. Um, but I had to threaten Bill Armstrong a little bit. So, But it worked out. We got rid of his cap, his cap hit, gave me some more room to operate, and uh, I wish him the best of luck in Arizona. 
Well, I definitely think it was the horse's head because it was just went, uh, ha, 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 I'll wait by no trade. <laughs> 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 there you go Lou thank you very much for coming back on the program thank you thank you very much and Mark um, uh, if you ever want me on again um, and you don't call me at a specific time because you know after dinner I'm eating my tiramisu and having some cigars if you disrupt me when that's going on um, you're going to get a knock at your door and um, let's just say you're going to suffer the same fate as Jimmy Hoffa all right, I'll, I will make sure because uh, I don't want to be under Giant Stadium. So thank you very much. All right, that was Lou Lamarillo joining us. And um, uh, so the next thing we got to do is we got to hear from the New York Rangers GM, Chris Drury, once again. First off, I would like to say that it's great to be back here as the first three-time appearance of anyone in the honest press conferences because after all you know i'm chris drury and uh yeah i mean i come up clutch that's what i do you saw me in the little league world series clutch colorado avalanche clutch uh the <laughs> buffalo sabers with 7.7 .7 seconds <clears throat> left to, to make Phil scream right now Clutch. That's what I do. And you know what? That's the thing. The Rangers needed some toughness. And I said, guys, we need that toughness. So I made some phone calls. I mean, sure. I had one phone call sent down to me from Jim Dolan. I can almost hear his voice right now uh, saying something. Sounds a little bit like John Falkowski screaming at me. No. Okay. All right. Nice. But, uh, but in any event, so that's what we got. We got a tougher team now. And I'm going to tell them all, yeah, we're coming. That's what we're going to do. This might even get to full-blown Randy Savage Town. So here we go. Let's go. Come on. I can't wait to start the season. How about you guys? I might even want to go throw on the old 23 and get down there myself. But you know something? I can watch from up top. And also, I look better in a suit. So I'm going to take some questions from the boys right down in here. Chris, um, there's a lot of cap space to be had even – after uh, a potential Igor Shesterkin extension, which uh, makes it a two-part question for me. How are the uh, negotiations going on that? Uh, how close are you to a deal with Igor? And then is there a possible move to be made with all that cap space after Igor is signed? Well, the great thing about cap space is if you have it, you can use it. And you know what? We don't need to use it right, right away. But we're going to be solid with our, our decision-making. We're not just going to go out, and I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, Phil. You want us to go get Jack Eichel because that's what $10 million worth of cash base is for. <laughs> but you know something? I would love to get Jack Eichel. After all, be you alum, be you alum with, the, with him. And I got to tell you, he'd be perfect in a blue jersey. I know that. I see him in that, in that Buffalo Sabre blue, and I just go, he'd be great with us. But you know something? I'm not giving Buffalo what they want. I'm not giving. I'm not giving up Lafreniere, Kako. Why don't I give up my 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 front teeth while I'm at it? Because somehow I still got my teeth. Because look at the hair. That's you know, I got that going for me too. So um, no, I'm I'm not giving up uh, blue chip prospects for potentially damaged goods. And if that's what happens. I mean, we still got to resign Fox. We still got to resign Sisterkin. Although I'm getting closer on it. it, I think I think I'll have him done probably within the next couple of days. Igor wants to be here. He didn't even file for salary arbitration. That's how close we are. So let's get this done. And uh, there really isn't anything else out there to sign as free agents. It's all trade markets. Mister Larocco, um, Chris. Uh what were you thinking on the Pavel Spichnevich trade? A lot of a lot of people are saying um, uh, that was a bad trade for you guys. Uh, you could have got more. Um, you know, frankly, I agree a little bit. Um, so, are you affected at all by how some fans are saying so far in your in your trades here as Rangers general managers that you haven't been faring that well? Well, for to those guys, I would have to say, especially um, ones on some upstart YouTube channel that. We're doubting whether or not I was any good. Uh, I would have to say, you guys asked me to toughen this team up. I toughen this team up, and then you bitch about it. I mean, make up your damn minds. 
uh, are we, I, as, as you know what, I'm going to make my own t-shirt that says damned if you do, damned if you drew. But if, uh, I mean, I got, I, do you want me to get the team to get tougher? I got Sammy Blaze. Sammy Blaze lays guys out. He did that to the former captain of uh, of the the St. Louis Blues while playing against them in the Stanley Cup Finals. What what more can you say about that? And getting Ryan Reeves, those guys, the Rangers aren't going to get bullied around anymore. That's what you wanted me to do. I did what you wanted me to do. And look, I like Pavel. He's a great kid. Uh, I've known him ever since I was uh, assistant GM here. Now I'm the president. And you know something? You got to do what you got to do sometimes. But that still doesn't mean I might have given up too much to get Sammy Blaze. I'm not going to give up too much to get Jack Eichel. Well, All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, Danielle Briere is better than you when you're in Buffalo. And uh, take a hike. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. And um, we'll see if uh, Daniel Briere is a better executive than me. Oh, wait, he's not an executive. <laughs> Boom. So, all right. I'm trying to break character for a moment. And, of course, um, there's another guy making news in the NHL right now, and it is possibly our favorite press conference as well as yours. Welcome back to the show once again, John Filkowski as Jack Eichel. This shit again? Seriously? Do I really have to do this again and answer a bunch of questions? Uh, a bunch of morons are going to ask me about how my organization or the team that I, I played for now, because we're going to use that in past tense, is really dropping the ball like a greased up running back here. Uh, yeah, I know my general manager um, seems to think that he can drag me through the mud. But my agent just blew up his spot. So if you wanted a mic drop, there's your mic drop, boys. So long, gay boys, to uh, quote a chow from The Hangover. Uh, but, yeah, um, I don't like this at all. Uh, they want they want to they want to uh, want to drag it out. They want to go through the uh, the mud and they want to they want to take my name and try to make me look like a bad guy. You know what? Kevin Adams. You, go, you could suck it for all I care. Degeneration X, got two words for you, bud. Suck it. Suck it. Yeah, because uh, you're just a piece of garbage, Kevin Adams. You're a piece of garbage. You're trying to make my life miserable. You know what? You want a battle? Here's a war. I guess I'll take your damn questions. <laughs> Fire away, losers. Anthony, you first. Um... Jack, you voiced the displeasure in Kevin, General Manager Kevin Adams, but um, has ownership the the Pagulas have they have they gotten involved in this? Have they said anything to you or um, tried to you know uh, mend things with you or you know have they had any communication with you uh, at all during during this process? Uh, so you're basically trying to tell me have they? come back and basically tried to kiss my ass to get me to come back to this team. Uh, no, they haven't. But if they did, it would give them a 75% chance of having a 35 plus 3% chance of actually having me come back to play for the Sabres minus another 22%, which would make me probably not play for them ever again. So uh, yeah, there's a little Scott Steiner math for you boys. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's going to ever happen because Kevin Adams is not a, capable of uh, sucking up his pride and realizing the players always win these things. Uh, yeah, degenerate into something fool. Kevin Adams can still suck it for all I care. And you know what? If he wants to tell me that I look like Marv from Home Alone, um, I think he can go uh, take a one-way ticket to fuck off Ville and, uh, yeah, and never come back because hashtag not my GM just like not my president, is going to be uh, the case for me here. Not my GM, Kevin. You're not my GM. I don't negotiate with you. You can talk to my agent. Talk to the hand, not the face. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Big Papa Jack is going to get his way eventually because the players always do in this case. See Alexei Yashin. Uh, see Eric Lindros. And that's what this is turning into because 
Uh, Kevin Adams can say, oh, we want players that want to be here. <laughs> you also want to play that your, uh, your doctors know what's best for me. My doctor doesn't. <laughs> You're an idiot, Kevin. Shut your damn mouth. So you know what? Find me a better question than that, please. Um, Jack, are you suffering from any depression from what the Buffalo Sabres organization has kind of done for you for the last few years? How it's just kind of sucked the life out of you. What kind of question is that, you dingbat? <laughs> are you serious right now? <laughs> depression? No. This team sucks. This team sucks. This organization sucks. But tell me that I don't know what's best for me in my life after hockey. I'm a human friggin' being. I bleed, I shit, I piss, I cry, I do everything the same way you guys do. If you cut me open, my blood is red. Hey, I have a life after hockey. And if you don't want to give me a life after hockey, well, then you know what? You can go fuck yourself. So you know what? I don't care about what Kevin Adams thinks of his of the surgery. I don't care. Doctors have performed it. Doctors have performed it. If Chris Weidman can go get the surgery and and he can go get punched in the face and kicked in the head and, and get thrown down on his neck and still fight in the UFC. And you know what? I can play hockey. If Peyton Manning can have that surgery done and go play in the NFL, then I can go play NHL hockey. It's been done before. You know, I'm tired of this shit. It's just stupid. I want this shit to be over with. I'm checked out. Yes. Am I depressed? No. Why would I need to be depressed? This organization is more depressing than anything. You know what? You, it, I would say living in Seattle where it rains every day would be the most depressing thing ever. But actually being invested in the Buffalo Sabres is, is more depressing than that. And that's why I'm not invested in this team anymore. I don't give a shit. Why do you think Reinhardt wanted out? Why do you think Risto wanted out? They're all gone. Because Kim Pagula doesn't know what she's doing. So, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe if the idiotic fan base would stop siding with the, the team and they'd realize that these other guys also want it out for a reason. And why do you think no free agents want to sign here? Taylor Hall, the only reason why he came there was because they were the only team stupid enough to give him $8 million after two subpar seasons in a row. Like, you were paying him for his MVP season, and he hadn't been close to that since then. So you know what? Maybe Rasmus Dahlin is gone soon, too. You know what? I'll be gone soon enough. So you know what, Kevin Adams? Open up. Take a deal. And move on with it. We can all move on with our lives. Because you look like a bigger moron the more and more you hold on to me. Anyone else with some questions that actually require some sort of critical thinking, please? Uh, I guess that wraps it up. Also, by the way, uh, I just want this to be over. I will take things all my ex-girlfriends have said to me for 400 So, um, Anthony, Get on that, you, Alex. Would, would, you, <laughs> would you mind saying goodbye to Jack Eichel? All right, Jack. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining us. And uh, I think um, I think you're a whiny little bitch that needs to stop your complaining and uh, and go fuck off. But have a good day. I think you should go blow some smoke out your ass, Guido. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, once again, that was our honest press conferences. We might have taken it a little too far, to bit, a little bit this time, but um, that's where we're always saying what the athletes wish they could be saying. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.